Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. This is a new week and I'm so sure God's plan for you, he has unveiled it and by the Spirit of God, he's going to bring him forth his plan, directing your steps into the things that he has planned and ordained for you. Before going to today's broadcast, can we make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready? Join me now and say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, we've been talking about the mercy of God or walking in God's mercy. And our text scripture is from the book of Psalms, Psalms chapter 119. Psalm 119 and verse 64. Now, if you have your Bible, I want you to look at it. And I told you last week, we can take one scripture and go over and over and over because is it before we're done? Because now this scripture is my main anchor to testify about the mercy of God. Now David speaking here says, The earth, O Lord, is full of thy mercy. Imagine. David is saying the earth, the whole earth is full of God's mercy. Why then? are people not enjoying deliberately the mercy of God. Most times when we speak of the mercy of God, it's reactional. In other words, it's after we look back and say, ah, God showed me mercy. God, God showed me mercy. See what would have happened. What about us looking at the future and depending on God's mercy, making advancement with that imagination in our hearts, that the mercy of God will be available to us. Not just being reactionary, not just being realizing. See? Because that's what we do, we do most of the time. But what David is talking about here has nothing to do with us. He says the earth is full of God's mercy. If the earth is full of God's mercy, it means everywhere I turn, I must, I will find the mercy of God. If that is true, then how well am I taking advantage of that truth? How well am I taking advantage of the mercy that is made available by God? Now that's why I'm sharing God's word with you. So now, now the essence of this whole thing we're talking about is so you can sit down and begin to imagine and say, look, there is, there is, there is a factor, you know, like we say, uh, you know, the God factor. Yes, this is the mercy factor. Now, how well can I trust the mercy factor? So David said here, teach me your statutes. If the earth is full of God's mercy, he didn't just say the earth is full of mercy. When he said the earth is full of mercy, now you start seeking mercy from men. But he said the earth is full of your mercy, God's mercy. The earth is full of God's mercy. So teach me thy statutes. Let me know how to navigate this earth according to your plan, according to the way that you have set it. Because when I do that, I will enjoy God's mercy. Because already the earth is full of it. You see? Now, I, I want us to look at this. The children of Israel, when they left Egypt, you know, God, God had told Moses, look, you're going to bring these people. And he, he actually told him the specific mountain he was going to take them to. And said, so when you bring them to this place, they will serve me here, okay? Now, Moses left that mountain and went to Egypt. He didn't cross the Red Sea. He didn't. Now, he, he, went, he walked to Egypt. However, he maybe used a donkey or whatever. He went by roads to Egypt. He didn't cross any sea, nothing like that. 
Okay. Now he got to Egypt and finished the assignment and God brought them out. And when God brought them out, he, he gave them an angel to guide them through the journey. That angel was a pillar of fire by night and a pillar of cloud by day. Now that angel was leading them in the way they would go. So all the angel does is to move forward and then they follow everywhere he turns, they turn. Now, guess what? The, the angel, I, I always say this when I tell this story. Imagine you are Moses. You know the way from Egypt to that mountain. You know the way. And you know how you came. So, imagine you're being led by an angel. Now, then you get to the junction where you're supposed to turn right. You know, this is the way I came. This is how you go. But then instead of turning right, this angel moved forward or turned left. Imagine trying to correct the angel. I said, no, pillar, <laughs> we're supposed to go this way. But God, now God knew Moses knew the way. Think about it. God knew that Moses knew the way. He knew. Because when Moses was going back to Egypt, God didn't tell him, look, this pillar will guide you to Egypt. <laughs> no. Now, going back, God now says, this angel will guide you and follow him. Okay, sir. And now you're following that angel. And then the angel got, you know, like I said, got to get to that junction. And then instead of turning right, like you would know, you would do, the angel turns left. Like, okay. But then God said, follow. All right, let's follow. And then they were all going. And imagine that road the angel now took, which you are already suspecting is the wrong road ends up at the Red Sea. Imagine the angel just leading you to the sea and, 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 and stops. Now, approaching the sea, you think, okay, the angel is in front. Well, is, this is a supernatural experience already taking place. I want you to know that the, the pillar of cloud by day and pillar of fire by night was already a miraculous experience. And nobody will tell you it was not something they could see. They all saw it. Oh, they did. And so the, nobody will tell you where well, we're going the wrong way. You see this pillar? We are following this pillar. This is already a supernatural thing that is happening before all our eyes. We're being led by this pillar. Okay? And then they got to the Red Sea. Imagine approaching the Red Sea and the pillar is in front. You will just think, um, the pillar, ah, okay, so it's God that is leading us, so I'm sure he knows what to do. And then gets to that Red Sea and stops. Why are you stopping? Okay, let's go and camp. And then they went there and they camped, waiting for the next thing to do. Now, why does it was a physical pillar? You remember when Pharaoh began to come with his chariots? The Bible said the pillar left the children, the camp of the Israelites and went to block the way of the Pharaoh's chariots. And they could not move. Read your Bible. So the pillar became a wall. They could not move. I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about. So the, the, it, it, you would have said, maybe the children of Israel, because they are godly people, they saw the pillar. No, the pillar also prevented Pharaoh and his army. They could not move. And they were kept all, let's, let's read it. So you don't think I'm just telling you some, bab, bab, I mean, I'm just blabbing some stories. <laughs> it's good. Oh, Libaraka Zegede Barusi. Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14. Let me just read verse, mm, verse 19. And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them 
and the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. Now take note of the expression. The angel was controlling this pillar. So it says the angel moved from behind, from before them and went behind them. Okay? And, and when the angel moved, the pillar moved. You know, sometimes I, you, we've taught these things. That's when you see a lot of spiritual or miraculous occurrence or supernatural occurrence you see or you experience, mostly at the work of angels. Okay? Now, verse 20. Exodus chapter 14. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud and darkness to them, but it gave light by night to these. Now, do you understand that? So that the one came not near the other all the night. Now, I want you to picture something. Now, that, this is just to let you know that this thing had an effect, real effect. Okay, so imagine a wall, and then to you, the wall gives you light, and then behind, it's all darkness, so you don't even know where to turn to next. So now this is happening in the night. Okay, now the pillar, the, 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 the angel led them to the Red Sea and was waiting. He waited, didn't say nothing to Moses. Until Moses thought, and now you read the whole thing in Exodus chapter 14. Until Moses cried out to God and said, Lord, we need help. And then God said, Moses, why are you crying to me? Tell the people to move forward. Then stretch your hands over the sea and divide it. Now God spoke to Moses as though Moses should have known what to do already. But Moses didn't know what to do. Now God was banking. See, remember I said, can we trust God's mercy ahead of us? Can we walk boldly with this mindset that the mercy of God is ahead of us? It will guide us. It will help us. Remember, the earth is full of God's mercy. If it's whether mercy is there or not, yes, it is. But then question is, how do you relate with the mercy of God? And when Moses cried out, thank God he didn't take a decision by himself. Thank God he knew to cry to the Lord. But you see, he waited until the people began to shout and cry before he took action, even going to pray. Most times we are like that. We wait until things get so bad. And we now say, ah, I've tried everything to do. Oh, I know it's not working. It's time to pray. Why don't you pray from the beginning? You see, you didn't pray from the beginning because you didn't know or you didn't walk with this consciousness that there is mercy available. What you thought your science could help, your brain will help, your, your knowledge will do the job, your, your connections will do the job, your money will do the job. That's what you thought at first. Until when you realize all these things have failed, then you now remember mercy. Why don't you keep mercy in front of your mind from the beginning? Even as you go on the journey, even as you walk, you're starting a business. Why don't, keep you, why don't you keep mercy in front of your mind? So much so that when they got to the Red Sea, Moses would have thought, mm -hmm, I'm sure God brought us here for a reason. Lord, what do we do now? He didn't even ask the Lord because the angel was leading him. Now, you see, that's, that's the mistake people make. Maybe, maybe your pastor or a man of God gave you direction. Now, because he gave you direction and then you, you believed him, you started that direction. Now, you want to run to him. <laughs> you understand? When anything goes wrong, say, ah, is this pastor that told me, is this man of God that told me to start this thing? Is this person that told me, let me run to him and tell him there's, a, there's, there's trouble. Turn to the Lord yourself. Turn to the Lord yourself. Now, it's better you've asked the Lord and the Lord directs you to this man of God again, okay? Now, when he does things like that, even you will know that this is the hand of God. Because I've seen that happen many times, you know. Sometimes you give people direction and then you're just on your own. And the Lord just minister to you. Call that person, he's in trouble. And then you take up your phone and you call. You say, hey, what's going on? The person, ah, thank God you called me. I'm in trouble. What is it? And this, oh, okay, do this, do this, do this. 
And that's it. Now, the Lord will tell you to call because he's put the answer in your mouth. But you see, if God have not put the answer in the mouth of that person, your calling will make no difference. God didn't tell this angel that, that was leading them by pillar and by cloud what to do. It was not his business. See, Moses, you have a business with God. I'm just to lead you on the journey. Now, when we get to a point where you need another intervention, it is between you and God. I'm teaching you something here. It's between you and God. See, your relationship with God must never, you must never jeopardize it. You must never substitute it with a relationship with any man, no matter how old blessing that man have been to you or God have even used that man to be in your life. Your relationship with God comes first. See, what if the man who, who gives you this thing now, now tells you, oh, I, I don't want to, I don't want to help you again. I don't, what would you do? Would you abandon the mission? Or would you remember God at that point and say, I know God, God will help me. Why? Because the earth is full of his mercy. This is a confidence that he wants us to walk in. God wants us to walk in this confidence. There is mercy. The whole earth is full. Now, now they got to the Red Sea. And by, when Moses cried out, and God didn't add one thing. God didn't say, oh, you need to get something. You need to pray like this. God said the, the wisdom on what to do about the Red Sea came right there. Let me read it to you. Verse 15. Verse 15. The same Genesis, uh, Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14. And the Lord, and the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore Christ thou unto me, speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward, but lift thou up thy rod, and stretch out thy hand over the sea, and divide it. No, <laughs> he didn't say, stretch your hands over the sea, and I will divide it. He says, all your hands over the sea and divide it. So Moses, you are the one that will divide the Red Sea. Okay. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Now the instruction was clear. You will divide the sea and the children of Israel will go on dry. Because if God had just said divide the sea and he divided the sea, there will still be fear. <laughs> if we enter this sea and it covers again, what will happen? So God said, the children of Israel, we go on dry ground. Now, that's some specific instruction. I want you to watch here. Now, let's keep... Let's keep verse... Okay, okay, verse 18. Uh, 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 verse, verse 17 now. Yes, after God said, they will go on dry, on, on, they'll go on dry ground. And behold, I will harden the heart of the Egyptians, and they will follow them. And I will get me honor upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts, upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. Now God completed, it says, Moses, relax. Pharaoh is going to come after you, but don't, don't be afraid. I will get honor on their head. Praise God. And, and now verse 19. Now we read verse 19 before when the angel left and went behind them. Okay. Verse 20, 21, sorry. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And the Lord, now take note, God says, stretch your hands over the sea and divide it, okay? Now, now, God didn't tell him how to divide it. God just says, stretch your hands over the sea and divide it. Now, that's how God speaks most times. He tells you, uh, go start that business. And then you're here, mm. God says, I should start the business, but I've not got any money now, so how can I start? <laughs> you see? How do I start? Imagine God telling an engineer today, go divide the sea. Divide the sea. Guess what he'll be thinking? Okay, we need to build a wall to divide the sea. So we need concrete, we need cement, because we need to build like a retaining wall. That's the only wall that can start. Now he's thinking of the foundation. He's thinking of the depth of the foundation, how to pile. And, 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 and he's thinking of all that stuff. See? He said, divide the sea. He's already thinking, man, we're going to spend some good time here because... Before we're going to, ah, okay, we need to get cement, we need to get this, we need to get this. That's all he can reason out. So God didn't tell him how to divide the sea. He didn't tell him with what. He just stretched your hands over the sea and divide it. Okay, now watch what happened. And Moses stretched out his hand over the, hand over the sea and the Lord. Now that's what God said to do. Stretch your hands over the sea. 
If God says start the business, I know my colleague, all you need to do is to go and say, I have started this business. <laughs> he didn't tell you how to start the business. Now you're the one that will be thinking, before I start the business, I have to register with Corporate Affairs Commission. I have to get this. I have to get an office. I have to get this. Now that's all you thinking. But what did you hear from the Lord? Start. How do you start? Start by starting. Praise <laughs> God. When you start, then you will need an office. When you start, then you will need to register. But start, that's all God said, start. If God has told you to start a ministry, if God has said start a church, then start. What did Moses, God says, stretch your hands over the sea and divide it, okay? Now Moses stretched his hands over the sea and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night. Praise God. Now, who did the parting? God did the parting. Moses did the lifting up. And my time is up. Praise God. Has God told you anything to start? Stop trying to figure out how to. Can you just start it? And allow the Lord to do his part. I pray for everyone that is watching right now. Indeed, the wind of God will blow in your direction as you obey the Lord. And that thing the Lord has put in your heart that you have obeyed him about will come into reality. In the name of the Lord Jesus. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.